The strategy of balancing comes from the balance of power theory of realism. In a balance of power system, countries have to protect themselves against three security problems. The first one is the threat of a direct attack by another major country. And the second one is the threat of being harmed indirectly by another country. So this is when the military actions of a major country undermines the security of another one, even if it's unintentional. And the third one is that the possibility that one major power will become a global hegemon and is then capable of harmful actions. So some of those actions can be rewriting the rules of international conduct to its own advantage. Another one can be exploiting the world's economic resources for its own gain. And another one will be imposing imperial rule, where the great power basically becomes an imperial power. And another one can be conquering another country. So for this, countries pursue a balancing strategy. So balancing refers to the actions that are taken by countries or a group of countries to make it hard for a stronger country to use its military advantage over others. So countries do this in order to equalize the odds against more powerful countries. The goal of this strategy can be to deter a country from attacking or to reduce its possibility of winning in a war. And it can be used for both, to gain power and also to decrease the power of another country. So balancing can be done internally or externally. And internal balancing is when a country enhances its own economic resources and military resources. So this is done so that the country can rely on their own independent capabilities in response to a more powerful country. And an example of this would be the US and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Both countries were increasing their capabilities internally in order to balance each other. And external balancing is when a country strengthens or creates new alliances with other countries in order to oppose a more powerful country or a rising power. So basically, instead of relying on their own internal capabilities, they create alliances with other countries that also see the more powerful country as a potential threat. And this approach can also lead to free riding. And this is when a country avoids the costs and the risks and just enjoys the benefits of the alliance. An example of external balancing would be NATO. The Soviet Union was the biggest power in Europe. So European countries needed to balance against the Soviet Union. However, individually, they were much weaker. So they formed NATO as an external balancing alliance against the Soviet Union. And nowadays we still have NATO, which serves as a way to balance Russia. Asia has a similar situation with China growing in power and some countries in the region, they form external alliances designed to balance China. And there are some cases in which some countries form alliances because both countries want to balance a different country. For example, a great power might form an alliance with a smaller power seeking to balance another great power. But the small power country that joined the alliance might be seeking to balance a regional power. However, one thing about external balancing is that due to the nature of the international system being anarchic, the reliance and the trust in other countries could be undermined. So alliances sometimes can be more of a temporary arrangement. And the two main ways of a balancing strategy are hard balancing and soft balancing. And the way I see them is like this. So hard balancing are actions that improves a country's own power against a rival. And soft balancing are actions that weakens or undermines a rival's power. So basically in both ways, 
they try to change the balance of power, one by gaining power and the other one by weakening the power of the other country. So these actions can be either military or non-military. So militarily, for example, hard balancing can create military alliances, they can pursue arms buildup, it can transfer military technologies to the allied countries. Basically anything that militarily increases that country or the alliance's power. Non-military ways, for example, can be increasing that country's own economic power or giving economic aid or transferring technology to the allied countries. So basically anything that uses non-military methods that can make a country or an alliance of countries balance against the other one that can increase their own power. And soft balancing, on the other hand, tries to weaken or undermine a rival's power. So militarily, it can use arms sale to an enemy of the rival country. So it can also pursue arms control efforts targeting the rival country. A country, for example, can also deny another country from using its own territory for transferring their military equipment, such as airplanes or tanks. And it can also use non-military ways. It can use international institutions, it can make diplomatic arrangements, it can pursue economic statecraft like sanctions and embargoes. It can also exclude the rival country from joining trading blocs. So basically, it can use non-military methods to weaken or undermine the rival powers, rival country's power. So those are the basic concepts of balancing in international relations. So when you look at a country's actions, especially against the great power, you can identify what kind of balancing strategy that country might be pursuing. So yeah, that's it for this one. And thanks for watching.